much, Prabhu, for joining and doing your session. Happy Radhas to me. Hare Krishna, is there anybody who would like to introduce themselves? Hare Krishna, Mataji, Danvat Pranam, please accept my humble obedience. Hare Krishna, Mataji, Guru and Gauranga. Yashamati from Chicago, Happy Radhas to me, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Shumati Mataji, Dhanavad Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Mataji, for joining and giving your assistance. Happy Radhas to me, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji, Dhanavad Pranam. Please accept my humble obeisances into your lotus feet. My Dhanavad Pranam to all assembled devotees. In India, Radha Ashtami will be tomorrow, but uh, Radha, happy Radha Ashtami to all. And all goes to Srila Prabhupada, all goes to Guru and Gauranga. You are looking very beautiful today, Mataji. As a, you are looking always beautiful, but today you are looking very nice. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Puja Mataji, Dhanavat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Mataji, for joining and giving your restriction. Hare Krishna, welcome to the call. Hare Krishna, Vanita Gandharika Mataji, Dandava Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Maharajas, and all glories to the assembled devotees. This is Tiffany in Pennsylvania. Happy Radhastami to all the devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Tiffany Mataji, Dandava Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Mataji, for joining and giving us Gita Station. Hare Bol, welcome to the call. Also, Mataji, your your um, video is frozen for me. Is it like that for everyone? Actually, else? Mataji, it's not video, Mataji. It's, just, it's my picture, Mataji. Ah. I'm so sorry. Today it was last minute service. I was not able to on my video. <laughs> okay, okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Vinita Kandavika Mataji, Nidanda Pranam, Augusta Shila Prabhupada, and Guru Maharaj. This is Shama Guru Devdasi from Shalvet. Hare Krishna Shamgauri Mataji, Dhanavat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Mataji, for joining and giving us with us session. Hari Bol. Happy Radhashtami, Mataji. Happy Radhashtami, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Vinita Gandurika Mataji, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaji. My humble obeisance is to you and all the devotees. This is Krishna Kumari Devi Dasi from Rale. Happy Radhashtami. Hare Krishna Krishna Kumari Mataji, Danvat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Mataji, for joining and giving your session. Hari Bol, welcome to the call. Hare Krishna Mataji, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances to you, Mataji, and to my devotees who gather today. I'm Chandra Sivini Lashmi from Malaysia. Thank you very much. Happy Sadastini to everyone. Hare Krishna, Mataji, Dhanavat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Mataji, Channel Lakshmi Mataji, for joining and giving your session. Welcome to the call. Hare Krishna, Vishwarup Das here. Hare Can Krishna, Prabhuji, me, please accept my humble co host. Yes, yes, I, got, co -host? I gave you a co host, Prabhuji. Okay, very good, thank you. Yeah. I record my, my lecture. Oh, you will record your lecture, Prabhuji? Yes, Prabhu, you yes, can yes. start recording. So, shall we start or you want to? Have yeah, I, I will be starting recording in a minute, Prabhuji. No, no, I will start recording. I'm saying, shall we start the lecture or wait for a few minutes? Yeah, you can start the recording, Prabhu. We are ready. Okay. <clears throat> One second, I will start recording from myself. Uh, one second, Prabhuji, one second. Hare Krishna, welcome to Bhakti Sangha Japa conference call. Today we are very fortunate to have His Grace Vishwaru Prabhu to enlighten us on the topic of special topic today. Radhastami special, the emblem of love. Uh, happy Radhastami to everyone. Uh, before I hand over the call to Prabhuji, I request uh, Suresha Sham Prabhu, please go ahead and give the introduction. Yeah, Hare Krishna Mataji, Dandavat Pranam, Al Gaurisya Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. So here is a brief introduction about Prabhuji. And thank you Prabhuji for joining us today. So let me, yeah. His Grace uh, Vishwarupa Prabhuji was, uh, was introduced to ISKCON in 1983 during his medical college days. Prabhuji received his first initiation in 86 and then Brahman initiation in 87. His Grace Vishwarupa Prabhuji has introduced many doctors and family 
to Krishna consciousness and cultivated many young student doctors as spiritual counselors. As spiritual counselor, he joined Radha Gopina Temple for full time services in eighty six. He organized the medical camps in Western Maharashtra suburbs, consisting of Prasadam distribution, Hari Nam Sankirtan, cultivating volunteers in Krishna consciousness and free medical services to villagers. Later on, Prabhuji moved to Rishikesh and Brindavan to serve in many capacities. Prabhuji developed the Barsana Eye Camp service in eighty nineteen ninety two. He worked in Saudi Arabia from ninety five to ninety seven as a medical doctor and conducted secret. spiritual programs every friday for an average 20 people in 97 he joined bhakti vedanta hospital as a as officer on special duty there he also assisted in establishing the Depa- department of spiritual care in 2004 his grace vishwaru prabhu ji took full responsibility of the department of spiritual care as deputy director he also started spiritual counseling services to nearby patients on on outpatient basis he developed a detailed protocol for end of life spiritual care and he trains the staff members on regularly this on this subject now he is training medical doctors into special spiritual lifestyle and practices he has developed a full fledged curriculum in spirit, spiritual care in nursing based on teachings of shila prabhu pada and for undergraduate and post graduate nursing students and implemented it in bhakti vedanta institute of nursing from 2005 he extensively delivered spiritual discourses on Bhag- shrimad bhagavad gita on various television channels like star tv asta etc colors and etc etc he also delivered professional and spiritual discourses to medical professionals in uk and usa thank you mata ji dhanyawad pranam back to you mata ji Thank you, Suresh Sharma Prabhu, for the brief introduction. Hare Krishna, Vishwaru Prabhu, once again, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shila Prabhu. Happy Radha Stami to you, Prabhu. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today and giving your association. Uh, we are eagerly waiting to hear from you, Prabhu. Please take over. Hare Krishna. My humble request to at least some of you to be on video because I am not trained to speak to video off situation. i am trained to speak to people and not to the screen o agyanati mirandhasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri guruve namaha shri chaitanya manobishtam stapitam yena bhutale स्वयं कदाम ददाति स्व पदातिक श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैतगदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुस्तुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रि प्रणमा हरि प्रि प्रणमा हरि प्रि हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो थैंक यू ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर गिविंग मी द ऑपरचुनिटी टू बी विथ यू ओवरसीज फ्रॉम भारत वर्षा एंड कनेक्ट विथ यू ऑन दिस auspicious divine subject of shrimati radharani in one sense if you uh, think about this subject it's a very intense divine and transcendental subject so much transcendental that even uh, the speaker of shrimad bhagavatam shukadev goswami did not speak about it directly so many of you may ask why shukdev goswami spoke bhagavatam to parikshit maharaj did not utter a word that is radha so uh, there are four reasons why he said that why he did, did that rather why he did not utter the name of radharani 
out of his humility he felt he was not qualified to speak on this subject second reason was there were many kinds of people in the assembly of uh, parikshit maharaj and shukde guru swami who were like uh, knowledge knowledge people for example gyanis gyan yogis ashtanga yogis hatha yogis and many other people seeking the lord in the path other than bhakti so this uh, topic is so esoteric that he could not discuss with them <clears throat> third reason was very important or rather more practical reason he was such a great devotee of radharani himself that he is the incarnation of the very parrot of radharani whose name was lila shuka and lila shuka being a parrot of the lord radharani was very very dear to radharani and was very intimate witness of all the intimate pastimes of radharani and krishna so he would go in trance for 6 months shan masini shan masini murcha is a shloka which says that if he would have uttered the word radha he would have gone into unconscious uh, murcha for 6 months shan masani so he was very compassionate over the uh, person called parikshit maharaj who had only 7 days to live and did not have much time so if you utter the word radha rani and he goes to trance in 6 months and what would parikshit maharaj do <clears throat> and fourth reason was um suppose now i am wearing this garland huh? what do you read in this sri radha now i am wearing it openly but suppose i hide it under my cloth then you all will be wondering what is this what is it that vishrup das is hiding in his cloth so you all keep wondering while i am talking what is it that he is hiding so your curiosity will increase and you can then relish the subject very nicely once after long time of curiosity you come to know so that's why he kept radharani and her past times in a hidden way in shrimad bhagavatam now as we have uh, taken the topic out of uh, shukdev being the parrot of radharani i must tell you the story also <clears throat> radha and krishna performed their past times on earth in vrindavan and other places krishna went radharani did not go for almost uh, 125 years and they all remained uh, 16 year old youth and they performed their amorous beautiful loving divine transcendental shringar ras madhuri ras past times and time came to depart from this world to go back to golok vrindavan to the original abode at that time lila shuka the parrot also wanted to go with them back home but radha and krishna told them no you are not going to come back so he was very sad he said why he said your job is to narrate our past times to everybody in the world for their upliftment for their spiritual benefit so devotees are always eager to serve more than their personal enjoyment their their own you know you can say selfish enjoyment they will always give up that if there is service involved service is always higher for them from their own personal gain so they said you have to describe our past times to everybody else whenever possible and lo and behold although he was a eye witness closest witness always sitting on the finger of radharani how close he must be in observing the loving intense past times of radha and krishna but he said point to note all of you he said i need to hear your past times from a great realized soul then i will be qualified to speak about your past times this is called real understanding of a person who is a speaker of um the philosophy of krishna consciousness and also 
the past times of the lord even though he was eye witness he wanted to hear it from a realized soul so he went to kailash and uh, there our dear lord shiva was narrating shrimad bhagavatam to his dear wife parvati and he was not uh, narrating like you know like me making a notes and reading in between he was in total trance in immersed in love for radha and krishna and he was closed eyes narrating and before he closed his eyes he told his wife to make me understand that you are hearing please keep making sound hmm 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 so in my closed eyes situation i can understand that you are still awake and listening so i can go on so he closed his eyes and he went in trance and started describing the past times of radha and krishna sure enough when third canto came description of the creation which is not kind of you know uh, filled with rasa or something it's like very technical information about creation and then the description of hells and heavens and so many things are there so she went to sleep and this parrot had come there and was sitting on the branch of the tree listening to the uh, past times of radha and krishna the shrimad bhagavatam and he also had heard the conversation that lord shiva wanted parvati to keep on nodding you know making sound as soon as he saw parvati goes to sleep or she dozed off he started making the sound of parvati in her sound saying hmm hmm because you know parrots are very expert in imitating anybody's sound and he kept on doing that till the end of bhagavatam and at the end of the bhagavatam parvati woke up and when lord shiva opened his eyes so she asked lord is it over is it finished he said yes so no i went to sleep i did not hear anything after creation so he said then who was saying hmm 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 who was making the sound so she said i don't know so she looked around he looked around and he saw a parrot listening on the branch of the tree so he was very angry that how a sub human living being can listen to the divine past times of shrimad bhagavatam radha and krishna so he wanted to kill the parrot instantly so he picked up his trident and started chasing the parrot and parrot started running and running and running in the range of himalayas he ran ran all the way everywhere everywhere and went to badrik ashram and at badrik ashram shila vyasadev vedavyas was narrating shrimad bhagavatam to his dear wife in the assembly of many other devotees and here the scenario was little different the wife of vedavyas was listening to shrimad bhagavatam with rapt attention so much rapt attention that she was like with open mouth sometimes when you are rapt attention you don't know where is the position of your lower jaw so she was like hanging on hanging her lower jaw with open like this so this parrot running 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 in the fear of the trident of lord shiva just entered the mouth of the wife of vidavyas and from there he entered her womb and she became pregnant and then vidavyas continued uh, speaking but when he entered the mouth vidavyas saw a lord shiva coming running behind with a trident raised you know so he asked what happened so lord shiva said this sub human living entity dared to come in the assembly without invitation to hear shrimad bhagavatam so it ha- it has to be killed so vedha vyas very humbly folded hands he said lord to lord shiva my dear lord shiva whoever has heard shrimad bhagavatam and that too from your lotus mouth now he is no more sub human living being he has already delivered he is already delivered he is a mukta jeeva so what is the use of uh, trying to kill a mukta jeeva which is made mukta by you only <laughs> by your own uh, divine vani divine words so lord shiva understood yes it is true because one of the glory of shrimad bhagavatam is that whoever hears shrimad bhagavatam he gets delivered from the clutches of birth and death he becomes jeevan mukta so lord shiva put his trident down he went away and then um the parrot 
has heard Shrimad Bhagavatam once from the lotus divine mouth of Lord Shiva. And now second time he hears Shrimad Bhagavatam from the lotus mouth of Vedavyas, who is the writer, who is the author of Shrimad Bhagavatam. And then this particular bird takes the human form in the womb of the wife of Vedavyas. And I think, uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, around 18 months pass of the pregnancy and the baby is not getting delivered. So Vedavyas was like you know, upset. What happened? Usually 9 months is the limit. This is 12 months, 15 months, 18 months have passed and still the baby is not coming out. So he thought, let me recite Srimad Bhagavatam again for the baby to come out. So he recited Srimad Bhagavatam again in front of the his own wife and she, uh, she heard Srimad Bhagavatam and not, not only she, the baby in the womb also heard Srimad Bhagavatam for the third time. So his uh, prerequisite of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam from pure devotees was fulfilled and he came out and then he came out as a boy who grew up as soon as he was born into 16 year old youth. That's why Shukadev is called as Siddha Avatar. He is not an ordinary living entity. He took birth and he not he was not trolling and you know making sound and learning to talk and walk. He just grew into 16-year-old youth. And as he was born without clothes, naked, he just started walking away. And then Veda Vyas, his dear father, you know, being so attached to his son, is running behind him. My dear son, my dear son. Please leave, don't go. Please wait. We just walked indifferently without even looking back as if he didn't even hear the sound of his father. So after some time, the father gave up the effort because son was not even listening. And uh, Shukadev kept on walking in the forest and suddenly he heard two beautiful shlokas from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Dasham Skanda, 10th Canto, Baraha Pidam Natavaravaku, which describes Sri Krishna and Balaram, the two brothers, walking in the forest with coward boys, playing on flutes, wearing peacock feather, herding cows, and you know, wearing Vajanti Mala, flower, uh, flower garlands, playing on his flute. Very beautiful, sweet description of Krishna's body and Krishna's persona. And he stopped. So you're wondering who was speaking. So he saw a small boys who were in the um, dress of a brahmachari, were like looking like students of some guru in ashram, in Gurukul. They were reciting these shlokas while they were cutting wood. Obviously, for the pleasure of guru, they must be cutting the wood. So he asked the students, who are you and from where did you learn these shlokas? So they very humbly said, our Guru Maharaj, has taught us this. So we are reciting this. So he said, can we meet your Guru Maharaj? Can you make me, can, we, can you introduce me to your Guru Maharaj? So yes, all the boys collected their wood and they took Shukadev back to the home of Veda Vyas because Veda Vyas was their guru and they were students of Veda Vyas. So there he again, fourth time, scrutinizingly studied under the guidance of Veda Vyas. Now, as a student and father was a teacher and he taught Srimad Bhagavatam in a very uh, scrutinizing technical way. That means Chandas and Vyakarana and every single thing very beautifully narrated along with the zist, the meaning, the purport of Srimad Bhagavatam. You can imagine after fourth time hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, three times from father, one time from Lord Shiva. After that, he has spoken Srimad Bhagavatam to Parishit Maharaj. And I already told you the reason why he was not able to uh, take the name of Radharani. So, our Acharyas also explain that who can understand Radharani? So the answer is those who are free from the attraction of opposite sex. They can understand the real meaning of Radha and real depth of the personality of Radha and the essence of love that she has for Krishna. And it's also explained that uh, one should not discuss intimate pastimes of Radha and Krishna 
in common forum of people because because um, please do not send messages in between the lecture it is quite distracting so uh, it is explained that moment we speak about radha and krishna in a common public then common public who are not uh, very pure at heart they start understanding it as if they see the men and women in the world what they do when they come together so their worldly understanding of relationship between men and women come in their mind when they hear the divine past tense of radha and krishna and they totally misunderstand it and take out wrong meanings from that and they start considering the lord and radharani as ordinary living beings ordinary boy and girl like we are or we we are in this world so before we go into beautiful past times of radha and krishna which are you know we can which we can narrate which are not so intimate but they uh, enough describe the glory of radha and krishna we have to understand that who is radha rani first of all radha rani is internal potency of krishna krishna has got three different shaktis radha she he has got uh, uh, unlimited shaktis prasya shakti vividhai vasuyate he has got vividha that is unlimited variety of powers and all these unlimited number of powers are divided into three categories one category is external energy which is represented or personified by durga devi bahiranga shakti second category is tatastha shakti or marginal potency in between and the marginal potency is manifested as all of us you and me and all the other living entities human and non human all of us are called as the ansha of krishna the part and parcel of krishna and we represent marginal potency tatastha shakti and then comes the internal potency antaranga shakti which is personified as radha rani and radha rani is a source of bhairanga shakti radha rani is the source of all the devis like saraswati lakshmi and durga devi and chandika devi and whichever devis you know all those devis are created by radha rani all the gopis are uh, created by radha rani all the queens of krishna in dwarka are the expansion of radha rani and in quality she is love personified <clears throat> although shri krishna has created her originally and what is she created of krishna has got uh, six aishwaryas we all know that krishna has got unlimited power unlimited fame unlimited beauty unlimited knowledge unlimited renunciation and the sixth one is called shri shri is uh, defined as beauty shri is also understood as wealth shri also is understood as karuna or kripa or mercy so this aspect of krishna's aishwarya that is shri becomes represented as antaranga shakti or manifest as radha rani so krishna has got unlimited qualities one of them is karuna which is also unlimited in him but when it gets separated from krishna and it becomes manifested as a separate person then the karuna of krishna gets multiplied millions of times and comes in front of all of us as radha rani so when it is when the karuna is in krishna it is x but when it manifests separately from krishna as the internal potency radha rani it becomes million million fold than krishna's karuna that is why after he is creates radha rani or he has one time created radha rani at a anadi kal unknown when it happened but at one point of time in the sequence of time when radha rani was created krishna started becoming dependent on the karuna of radha rani although he is a source and creator of radha rani he becomes subordinate 
to Radharani's mercy and Radharani's compassion because Radharani is the emblem of love. She is the very epitome of love. And Krishna owns everything, but Krishna is dependent on the love of all of us, which comes from Radharani. And all love, Radharani is the source of all love in this world. All devotion, all love comes from her. You and me, you and myself, all of all of you, myself, we all may think that we have some love for Krishna. We like Krishna. We have faith in him. We have some seed of devotion in us. We have some devotion in us. But we have to understand that all that seed of devotion, all that love that we feel we have, all the trace of love that we have, all that originates from her. It comes from her. It is her mercy that we have that connection or that tendency of loving the Supreme Lord Krishna. Because she is the storehouse of love for Krishna. So, <clears throat> Radharani is eternally enthusing all of us. All of us. Each and everybody of us. Each and every living entity she is enthusing, perfusing all of us with the desire to please Krishna. Because she is the very personification of the activity of pleasing Krishna. The whole success of our life our whole goal of our life is to please Krishna. And she is the teacher or the master of the art of pleasing Krishna. And her only job, what she wants to do is love Krishna and enthuse everybody to love Krishna. <clears throat> so, um, very interesting. I already told you that the queens of Krishna, they were the expansion of Radharani. So one time, all the queens of Krishna of Dwarka, they met Draupadi and uh, they asked Draupadi that we have one husband and we are so many thousands of wives here. But none of us are able to you know, control Krishna. He is so uh, Sutantra, a big Svarat personality. And you are one wife and you have five husbands and how you wonderfully control your five husbands. What is the secret? <laughs> so Draupadi has revealed the secret here. The first principle in controlling, how to control your husband, the first principle is give up the mentality of controlling. <laughs> Very beautiful answer. The wife controls the husband only through the medium of service and love. So she said, you please give up this desire to control and just serve with love. Serve your husband with love and through that service, through that selfless service, which is only intended to please the husband, the husband becomes automatically willingly controlled. Because love means there's only one thought. How can I please my beloved? Through anything, through anything that I do, my activity, my glance, my talks, my words, my activities, just to serve and please. That is the uh, meaning of love. And what is what does what does lust mean? Lust mean what I am going to get out of it in this relationship. What is my gain? When one thinks like that, the love gets spoiled and it becomes lust. And lust never satisfies. Lust is always agitating and overwhelming to every living entity when one expects something for oneself through any relationship. So with these few words, Radharani's glories are unlimited. She is the personification of Shuddha Bhakti, pure devotional service. And pure devotional service is explained by our Acharya, Rupa Goswami, in the book called uh, Nectar of Devotion. I have got in front of me. This book is Nectar of Devotion. In Sanskrit, it is called as Bhakti Rasamruta Sindhu. Bhakti Rasa, the mellow of Bhakti. Amruta, which is nectarian. And Sindhu means ocean. The ocean of the nectarian mellow of devotion. And Prabhupada made it simple. He entitled it as, uh, titled it as uh, Nectar of Devotion. But the real word is Bhakti Rasa Amruta Sindhu. And it is explained, please understand all of you, this particular book, Nectar of Devotion, 
is supposed to be Radha Rani herself, personified Radha Rani. Srimad Bhagavatam is Krishna himself. Bhakti Rasamruti is Radha Rani herself. And another factor is uh, what did Shukadeva Goswami speak in Bhagavatam? What is the subject matter? The subject matter begins from the end point of Bhagavad Gita, that is surrender, Sharanagati, Samarpana. And from Samarpana, the subject begins and ends in love. So Bhagavatam is supposed to be the discussion about love. What is the love between gopis and Radharani and Krishna? What is the love between the coward boys and Krishna? What is the love between Nanda, Yashoda and elderly Gopas and Krishna? What is the love between cows and Krishna? All varieties of love are described in details in Srimad Bhagavatam. So, subject matter of Srimad Bhagavatam is love. And who is the personification of love? Is Radharani. So, Shukadeva Goswami Maharaj is narrating about Radharani without taking her name by describing all the loving pastimes of Krishna with his devotees. So, the whole Srimad Bhagavatam is actually, in one line, pure devotional service explained in disguise. So, what is pure devotional service? Rupa Goswami explains, Anya bilashita shunyam jnana karmadi anavratam anukullina krishna anushilanam bhakti ruttama. Shuddha bhakti means anya abilashita shunyam, no other desire than pleasing Krishna. It is not contaminated by knowledge and karma. It is favorable to Krishna. Krishna anushilanam. It is not pratikul to Krishna. It is anukul to Krishna. It is favorable. And that is called as uttam bhakti. Bhakti that delivers one from ignorance. Darkness of ignorance. And it is defined, it is classified by six items. That is called, what do you, what do you get when you perform Shuddha Bhakti? That means, Radharani is the emblem of Shuddha Bhakti. She is a personification of Shuddha Bhakti. But what does she do? Or when she uh, gives us Bhakti, what do we do? We serve Krishna favorably and selflessly just to please him. And what, is, what happens when we start doing it? We may not have become pure devotee, but still we are performing Shuddha Bhakti. So what do we experience? First thing we experience is mitigation of all miseries. Klesh Agni. Second, we experience is Shubhada. Everything becomes very auspicious. Third, we experience is Sandrananda Visheshatma. That means one starts experiencing joy, bliss, happiness, freedom from fear, anxiety. That is the first experience. Immediate experience. You start feeling blissful immediately. Fourth one is Moksha Laguta Krita. Everybody is working hard to achieve moksha. That moksha becomes very insignificant compared to the happiness experienced out of bhakti or love. And fifth item is, one understands that what I am getting is very, very, very rare. In Sanskrit, it is called as sudurlabha. The experience of bhakti is that I understand. It is very, very rare what I am experiencing. And the last one and most important, which actually very directly represents Radharani, is Shuddha Bhakti is Sri Krishna Akarshini. It attracts the attention of Krishna. Your knowledge, unlimited, vast Vedic knowledge does not attract Krishna. Our austerities, severe austerities do not impress Krishna. Our expertise in doing karma doesn't impress Krishna. Our being expert mystic doesn't impress Krishna. What impresses Krishna is love. What impresses Krishna is Shuddha Bhakti. And that is why it attracts Krishna. And what attracts Krishna is Radharani. So that is why Shuddha Bhakti is Radharani. And Radharani is Shuddha Bhakti. But that attracts Krishna. So whoever reflects the quality of Radharani, of selfless devotion, selfless love, that attracts Krishna. So another point I want to tell you because it is all practical point. We sing Shikshashtakam every day in the temple. Cheto darpana marjanam bhava mahadavagni nirvapanam and we go on. It is explained in Chaitanya Charitamrita, the last chapter of the last canto of Chaitanya Charitamrita is talking about Shikshashtakam. 
written by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Shikshashtakam prayer is Radharani's love for Krishna manifested to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The recitation of Shikshashtakam prayer, the benediction which is explained in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrut last chapter by the writer Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, is one will develop love for Krishna for sure if one recites Chaitanya Shikshashtakam every day without fail. And one may not understand the intricate understanding of language of Sanskrit of Chaitanya Shikshashtakam, but simply recites with faith and love and devotion, one day he will definitely develop love for Godhead. That is what the benediction, Falashruti of chanting Shikshashtakam. So, uh, <clears throat> let us talk about now Radharani in uh, possible uh, ex extent or whatever we can describe. How Yamuna Devi was created in Golubrindavan? Radharani and gopis performed Rasalila with Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan, the original spiritual divine abode of Krishna's residence. And when they performed their Rasalila, divine water came out of their body. You know, what water comes out of our body is called a sweat. And that is not a very good thing. It smells bad. It makes you feel sick. Although it is good to sweat and take out all the toxins, but it doesn't feel you, make you feel fresh. Whenever sweat comes, you need to take bath to make you feel nice and to you know get pure. We cannot go in a sweaty condition to temple inside the temple to dress the Lord or worship the Lord. You have to take bath. But when such divine waters come out of the body of Radha and Krishna and gopis, it is divinely fragrant, mesmerizingly fragrant, exotically fragrant. It's divine. It's called a Swedajal. The perverted uh, English word of that is sweat. But the original uh, Sanskrit word is Sveda. Svedajal. And Sved is always fragrant. And such waters when they come out of the body, pores of gopis, Radha and Krishna, they got collected in the form of a pond. That pond was not only fragrant, large and expansive, but it also was effulgent and very beautiful and attractive to the eyes of beholder. So next day Radharani brought Krishna to the bank of the pond and observed this pond and she was so impressed and so enamored. She told Krishna that this pond is so beautiful, why it has to be stagnant in one place? It has to be flowing. Let it be flowing. Instantly when she, she said that Krishna fulfilled her desire and make the, made the pond flowing and that flowing pond, the waters which are flowing, they became Jamuna. But this is how Yamunaji was born. So who is the cause behind the birth of Yamuna in spiritual world? That is our dear Radharani. Because of her mercy, Yamuna came into existence. How important Yamuna is, we will talk on some other subject on some other day. How important ingredient of Yamuna is of Golok Vrindavan and of the Bhauma Vrindavan, which manifested on earth later on. Now next comes Govardhan. What is the origin of Govardhan? So, after performing Rasalila many times, one time Radharani met Krishna in person, in seclusion, she said, O Sri Krishna, I desire to perform intimate, private, confidential, loving pastimes with you. And for that, I need a very special place where only we can meet and exchange our love. At that time, Krishna closed his eyes and listened very carefully. What is important here? Krishna meditated on the love that he has for Radharani in his heart with closed eyes. And when he was meditating in the vast expansive ocean of love of Radharani that he has and what she has for him. Out came effulgence from his chest. From front of his chest, out came effulgence and settled down on the floor of divine Golok Vrindavan and grew as Govardhan mountain. Everybody was beholding the beautiful development of the mountain. So what is Govardhan? Govardhan is manifestation of Krishna's love for Radharani. We all go to Vrindavan and we all go and perform our Parikrama 
while performing parikrama while listening to the past times of krishna and radha at govardhan while listening to past times of govardhan itself himself we have to all keep in mind this understanding that this whole mountain is the manifestation of love of krishna for radha rani and it has also come out because of her only because she wanted to create or she wanted to have a place where they can perform their past times and the place has to be very beautiful it cannot be just any any seclusion place so govardhan is filled with caves waterfalls gardens greenery trees fruits flowers sitting places ponds jewels jadi buti herbs fragrance every single thing every single thing that needs to have needs to be to make radha and krishna get inspired to perform their loving pastimes all present in govardhan govardhan is a silent leader he leads all the service to krishna in all the rasas but at the background in a very silent way and he is a very example of how a devotee should be and that great example of govardhan was created simply because of radharani's desire and then radharani is so attached to shri vrindavan dham shri jamuna ji and shri govardhan that she told krishna when krishna declared to momi devi that i will be appearing very soon <clears throat> to deliver you of all your sufferings so radharani said i will not come with you if there is no vrindavan no yamuna and no govardhan i cannot live without it it's impossible so krishna said i know your mind i know you very well i know your desire so i have already sent vrindavan with full jamuna and full govardhan to the material world to the planet earth so imagine today we are living in india fortunately all of us most of us have taken birth in india as a great fortune because land of divinity devaloka and it is explained that uh vrindavan dham has come to bharat varsha simply because of the desire of radharani if radharani wouldn't have desired krishna would not have sent vrindavan yamuna and govardhan on earth so today if you go and me you and me go to vrindavan and see yamuna flowing very beautifully shri govardhan standing very gracefully shri vrindavan the land of vrindavan you know standing out effulgently beautifully attractively is all her mercy that is why that is why we are advised by your devotees the saintly people the great devotees of radha and krishna they have been advising us always be praying to the for the mercy of radha rani at the bottom of your heart while you are in vrindavan from the point of entry constantly one has to pray for the mercy of radha rani at the bottom of our hearts with gratitude in the heart gratefully and gracefully we have to pray, pray to radha rani's mercy you one can connect to krishna and radha rani and vrindavan dham or one can actually be in vrindavan spiritually not physically with this mortal body in spirit if you want to enter vrindavan or stay in vrindavan or be in vrindavan and dwell in vrindavan it is possible only by sanction and mercy of radha rani but she is the queen of vrindavan she is vrindavaneshwari krishna may be the lord of vrindavan but no one chants his name in vrindavan everybody chants jay shri radhe 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 every every leaf every blade of grass every bird every living entity every every uh, drop of sand or any atom of sand dust chants radhe radhe in vrindavan because that is what it means that krishna is subordinate to radha rani's love in vrindavan he gives up his position as supreme lord and willingly and desiringly becomes subordinate to her love because of her love is so powerful and so overwhelming that krishna chooses to love radha rani and krishna chooses to be subordinate to radha rani's love he chooses to be under her control and desires to be controlled by her his activities can be controlled by her he gives whole authority to her only he goes and 
rolls in the dust of Vrindavan, especially the Varsana part of Vrindavan. Because there Radharani walks barefoot on that sand, on that dust. So he rolls. Then he rolls in the dust, offers pranams to Radharani in that dust. And then when she becomes upset, he also sheds tears, rolling under her feet. Cries for her mercy. One cannot imagine what is her position. Shad Aishwarya Purna, Ishwara Parama Krishna, Satchidananda Vigraha, Anadir Adir, that Govinda, who is a cause of all causes, Sarva Karana Karanam, he is bowing down to somebody. So you can imagine how that person must be, how great that person must be, whom the Supreme Parabrahma is bowing down, not only bowing down, but rolling, not only rolling, but shedding tears of love, begging for mercy and love. It is said that Radharani is the source of all Vedic knowledge. How? When she walks, when she walks in a very graceful manner in Sri Barsana Dham, her ankle bells makes beautiful sound. And that dhvani, that nad, that beautiful sound of her ankle bells gives rise to Vedas. So the real Vedas are not coming from Krishna. Although it is said in Bhagavad Gita, Veda ham samatitani, huh? Vedaishya sarvair aham eva vedyo, Vedantkrit veda videva chaham, Sarvasya chaham ridhisanni vishto, matakruti gyanam apomancha. I am the source of all knowledge, the memory and the forgetfulness. I am the source of Vedas. I am to be known from Vedas. I am the Vedas. I am the creator of Vedas. Yes, at one level it is true. He is the agency of Vedas. But the original Vedas, they come from the sound of the ankle bells of Radharani, from where it is captured by Krishna. And then it like through the agency of Krishna, it becomes marketed as Vedas. So all knowledge comes out of Krishna, or Radharani. Then all the love, which is called as rasa, rasa means the mellow, the essence. When we concentrate something, it is called rasa. Like we have a flower of rose. Then you, you know, concentrate, centrifuge and extract. And what comes is rose essence or rose water. And you further concentrate, it becomes rose itra. It's very, very intensely fragrant. So that is called as the essence of the flower of rose. So the essence of all love is called rasa. And it is of many types. So all types of rasas of love, they emanate from Radharani. And Krishna may be called as Rasaraj. No doubt about it. Krishna may be called as Rasavihari or Rasavihari. But from where it originates? It originates from Radharani. So Krishna becomes Rasaraj after accepting the Rasa from Radharani and then he develops it and then he becomes himself Rasaraj. Krishna is called Nataraj. He is an expert dancer. His dance is so captivating. But who has taught him dance? His Natyashala teacher is Radharani. At the banks of Yamuna at various spots, she teaches him dance. And then he puts strong steps purposefully so that he can associate to Radharani for more time. Because if you put wrong steps, then she will keep teaching him again and again. Are put like this, Baba, put like this. So that will give more time. And then she comes to know that he is cheating me. Although he's a very expert student, he can pick up things very fast, but he's just fooling me by putting wrong steps purposely. The point I am conveying here is, Krishna may be Nataraj, but the dancing skills are taught by Radharani. <clears throat> Krishna may be called as Murli Manohar. He is the expert flute player. His flute mesmerizes the whole creation, including Mahavishnu, including Garbodakshaya Vishnu, including Narsimha Dev, including Lord Ram, including every other expansion of Krishna. They all get mesmerized, the whole creation, material and spiritual. Everything gets mesmerized. The sound of the flute penetrates all the layers of creation and makes people mad. Krishna is so famous for his flute. In fact, flute is uh, Bansi Priya Sakhi, the very dear accompaniment of Krishna in Vrindavan Dham is the flute, Bansi. Now, Radharani is the original teacher of flute playing to Krishna. At the banks of Yamuna, sitting on the branch of a tree, 
Krishna sitting on the ground with folded hands and learning flute from Krishna, from Radharani. So Krishna has learned the art of flute playing from Radharani. She is his flute teacher. And all such things I can go on and on explaining to you. All such things. The teacher is Radharani to Krishna. Even the art of love. She teaches Krishna. She gives that gift of love. She makes Krishna enamored by power of her love. She is a real teacher to all of us also. That the real relationship is not external. The real and the topmost definition of any relationship is love. If there is no love, the relationship does not last for any longer time. We may say love, love, I love you, you love me. But unless there is selflessness in love, unless there is concentration on the item of pleasing the beloved, the relationship cannot last long. And that love which is everlasting, eternal, transcendental, beyond the three modes of material nature, Sattva, Raja and Tama. That love is pure love, selfless love. And Radharani is the emblem of that love. And Sri Krishna receives that love from Radharani, from the agency of Radharani. So now, um, let us uh, <clears throat> understand the power of that love. One time, uh, Sri Krishna was playing Rasalila in the month of springs, spring season, Vasantir, Vasantarutu, which we know as Chaitra Vaishak in our Indian calendar, maybe April, May, or maybe mid-March to mid-April, mid-April to mid-May, Chaitra Vaishak, where Lord uh, Ram takes birth in Chaitra Navami, Chaitra Navaratri is there, in uh, Hanuman Jayanti is there, in that month, when Narsing Bhagavan also takes birth. So Krishna hid himself suddenly and the gopis became very, very desperate for Krishna. And they were like mad women calling out for Krishna, searching him from place to place, asking the trees, asking the creepers, asking the birds, asking the Gramya Devata, asking the Vanya Devata, have you seen our Krishna? Have you seen our blue, blue Krishna, Neelamani, our the treasure of our heart, have you seen? We have lost the treasure of our heart in the forest. So suddenly Krishna wanted to play a trick. Krishna is a very, you know, uh, how to say, notorious, naughty. Notorious is a little bad word, but naughty is a very sweet word. He's a very naughty person. He also always wants to pull legs of his beloved. So he assumed the form of four-armed Vishnu and he stood on the highway. I mean, main road. In some, in, in the forest also there are ways, some big ways, small ways. So he stood on the main way from where the gopis were uh, walking and searching for him. And he, you know, he stood with four arms. Shanka Chakra Padmagata, the opulences of Vishnu of Vaikuntha. We don't see, we don't see Shanka, Chakra, Padma and Gada in Vrindavan, anywhere in the hands of Krishna. What do you see in the hands of Krishna? Only flute. And they're always playing flute. That's all. But suddenly the items of Vaikuntha, items of opulence, Aishwarya, manifested. There are no four arms in uh, Vrindavan. Nobody has four arms. Everybody has four arms in Vaikuntha, including Lakshmi Devi and including Krishna, I mean Vishnu and all the inmates of Vaikuntha. All of them are four armed. But Vrindavan, everybody is two-armed. Dvibhuja. Suddenly four-armed. Aishwarya Sampanna personality appeared. And the gopis came. And suddenly they saw Vishnu. They bowed down to Vishnu and said, Oh, Vishnu Maharaj, please accept our pranams. My, our most humble, respected, revered obeisances to you. Please bless us. And now let us know, have you seen Krishna? <laughs> Imagine if you and me meet Krishna, I mean Vishnu on the road. He will just stick there. And said, Vishnu, please give us a few minutes. I want to make a list of application to you. How many desires we have, please fulfill. But the gopis bowed down to them. And the first question they asked, where is our beloved Krishna? Have you seen where he has gone? So Vishnu, the, the, the Krishna in the form of Vishnu was completely getting overwhelmed. 
the kind of love they were expressing but somehow he composed himself he, he did not you know collapse or something and with one of the four arms holding that aishwarya sampanna item he pointed go that side he has gone this way now the gopis immediately left vishnu and ran and then radharani was coming from behind and one bumblebee bhavra was you know moving around her while she was walking and she was thinking that that bhavra the black bhavra because he is black colored she was thinking he is krishna and she was talking to him as krishna and giving bad words to him how cruel you are what kind of a lover you are is this the way to give up our company and hurt us and make us miserable and she was using bad words you know and suddenly while talking in the trance to that bumblebee as if he was krishna and using bad words in immersed immersed bhav suddenly she sees vishnu so she immediately starts talking to that uh, bumblebee and you know bows down to vishnu and asks asks vishnu have you seen my beloved krishna the way she expressed her agony and inquired the krishna in the form of vishnu you know out of his out of control he could not maintain his four arms he could not maintain holding those four opulent items and all of them disappeared two arms disappeared and out of control krishna's remaining two arms developed flute and started playing flute he was not planning to he was trying to maintain his aishwarya from to fool gopis but krishna's aishwarya form could not be maintained by the stormy ocean of love madhurya love of radharan let me explain to you there is something called madhurya madhurya means sweetness you know and madhurya doesn't uh, need any opulence it doesn't need gold or jewels or shine or opulence it doesn't need anything it's simple from the heart is to be felt by the heart opulence is to be felt by eyes touch feel hear you can see the sound of the ornaments or see the ornaments dazzling the mukuta and everything that is aishwarya so vaikuntha is aishwarya and vrindavan is madhurya and radharani is the emblem of madhurya so it is said that krishna fails to maintain the divine opulence that he has in vrindavan dham however he tries his best and he wants to maintain he is struggling to maintain but the madhurya of radharani is so overwhelming that he never understands ki when he has lost his aishwarya and when he has transformed into form of krishna when he has become two armed and when he is two armed has have started playing flute without his his you know control so automatically when radharani asked that question krishna found himself in two arm form playing flute with his two arms and krishna could not hide himself his hiding disguise was exposed by the power of love of radharani so today also we have that place called narayan chaturbhuj narayan mandir in petha gaon in pravishtavan this is called as pravishtavan today it is called petha in that village the still there is murti of chaturbhuj narayan and that narayan is not narayan it is krishna in disguise this krishna only who is who has failed miserably to maintain his vishnu form there he has he has been defeated by radharani by the power of love overwhelming love so <clears throat> there are other beautiful pastimes also like um, there is a place called manasi ganga you know uh, where ganga devi the sister of yamuna devi had requested yamuna devi please let me also have some place in vrindavan dham you are so fortunate that krishna is always taking bath in you you have become charanamrut hundreds of times you have become substrate for krishna's water pastimes you have given so much pleasure krishna always is embracing you always in your waters and purifying your existence making you so divine so why don't you request him to give me also some place so krishna manifested uh, manasi ganga manifested ganga from his heart from his mind that's why it's called as manasi ganga ganga which came out of his mind 
and remained in the middle of Govardhan as a big lake, big pond. So it's called Manasi Ganga pond. And then Krishna used that pond, which is like ocean-like pond in the middle of Govardhan. Krishna used that pond to perform water um, boating pastimes, which we call in Sanskrit as Nauka Vihar Leela. Nauka is boat. Vihar means pastimes or boating. Nauka Vihar is called boating. And Leela means divine pastimes. We are not in the tinge of material world. So, from uh, Manasi Ganga part of Govardhan, towards the north is Barsana. Towards the south is Mathura. And the gopis would come from north, Barsana and the side. And often they would cross this lake in the boat and go on the south side of the lake and then walk and go to Mathura to sell their butter or milk or yogurt. And many times they would take boat. One time they took the boat. It was like late. They were late and many boats had gone and only one old boatman was remaining with his dilapidated old boat. So gopis all came and said, Oh dear boatman uncle, can you take us across? He said, yes, yes. So he decided what is the way, what is the, uh, how will you pay me? So they decided that we will give you one pot of yogurt at the end of our journey. And uh, you take us and we will give you. So everything was agreed upon. And then we started traveling. <clears throat> as soon as little distance was traveled, the boatman said, see, I am not eaten for the whole day. I am hungry. I don't have any strength to row the boat. So your charge, you give me now only. Whatever we have decided, that a pot of yogurt you will give me, you give me now only. Otherwise, I will not be able to row the boat only. I am so weak. They said, okay, what to do? The agreement is to give in the end. Generally, we pay the rickshawala, taxiwala in the end only. But this boatman is a very unique man. In the middle of the water, he's telling us, uh, we cannot, uh, I cannot row anymore. So let us, okay, fine. So they, they gave him yogurt. He ate the whole pot of yogurt. And what he says, now after having full stomach yogurt, I'm feeling sleepy. So let me have some rest. And you now I have a habit of getting massaged at my feet and hands when I'm sleeping. I have a habit at home. So some of your girls can massage my hands and feet. <laughs> they chastised him. What nonsense. You can, you can take rest. Don't expect any massage. So he took some rest and again started rowing the boat. After rowing some distance, he says, uh, the boat is becoming heavy. The boat is almost sinking. Water is coming inside the boat. Look, 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 look from this hole. Look, some water is coming inside. So they said, what to do now? He said, your, your luggage you are carrying with you is very heavy. You have to empty, throw away all the pots in the water. Now said, we wanted to go to sell those things and make money. That's our profession. And now we are talking about life and death situation. Otherwise, you will die. Your boat will sink. And I don't would know. I, I know swimming. You don't know swimming. So, Helplessly, he made the gopis throw all the pots of yogurt, butter, milk, everything in the water of Manasi Ganga. And then he said, okay, it's little better now. We can row. After rowing for some time, he says, boat is still heavy. You remove all the ornaments because they are also you know, causing weight. So, helplessly, all the ornaments also were thrown by the gopis in the water. And then he said, now again the boat is heavy. So you should remove all your clothes and throw in the water. He said, we will slap you and we will remove your clothes and throw you in the water. So he was kind of, okay. And after some time, there was a storm. Thunders in the sky. Clouds gathered in the sky. There was thunders coming in the sky. Bijli was coming, you know. Lightning was coming. And the situation becomes so fearful, windy and dark. And Radharani is out of fear, she went and embraced the boatman. And she realized that the boatman was Krishna actually. The boatman was Krishna in disguise. He wanted to uh, have pastime. So she asked, why did you do this Leela today? He said, Ki, now I wanted to you to come in the middle of the water, far from the land and have private pastime with you. So immediately the dilapidated boat became divine. Uh, jewel studded boat very opulent and beautiful and shining. And the clouds went away, the thunders went away, lightning went away, it became so peaceful. It was already evening time. 
So the whole night Krishna performed boating pastimes with Radha and Krishna. And one night of Brahmaji was included in that one night of earth. And one night of Brahmaji is 432 crores. 4,320 4, million, billion years was included in one night of earth. And that much time the gopis and Radharani performed boating pastimes. So then comes, <clears throat> there's a place called as uh, uh, Javat, you know Javat. I'll tell one story because time is getting up. So Javat is a place where uh, you all know that when um, Brahma stole the baby cows and baby bulls and all the coward boys, he stole. And then Krishna expanded himself into all the coward boys, all the baby cows and baby bulls and went back home as if nothing had changed. So all the coward boys were Krishna. All the baby cows and baby bulls were Krishna. They returned home. So every mother got the experience of having Krishna as their own child, which they desired, which they always prayed for. So Krishna uh, expanded as the babies of all the gopis, elderly gopis. And Krishna became cows. So all the cows wanted Krishna as their baby. So all the cows were Krishna. So they suckled their udders and the cows got tremendous happiness by feeding Krishna their milk, not knowing that the calf was Krishna himself. But they experienced that pleasure. All the gopis, marriageable gopis, they got married with all the gopas, poor Krishna. So all the gopis had desire to marry with Krishna. So Krishna became all the coward boys in Vrindavan Dham and suggested his father that now the time is very auspicious. Let all gopis get married with all the coward, suitable coward boys. So good matchings were done. All the gopis got married with all the coward boys and all the coward boys were Krishna. So Krishna fulfilled all the gopis, young gopis desire to become their husband. So in this process, Abhimanyu, the expansion of Krishna or personification of shadow of Krishna, this is Krishna himself but in the illusory form. Abhimanyu was Krishna's shadow. So Radharani got married to him and his mother was Jatila, his sister was Kutila. You can understand from the word Jatila and Kutila means complicated. Very difficult is Jatila and Kutila means very complicated. <laughs> so the name suggested they were their role was to just prevent Radha and Krishna from meeting. And uh, uh, Abhimanyu became the husband and that time he was Krishna himself. And finally when Brahma brought the coward boys back and Krishna withdrew his forms, the original Abhimanyu came and his role was only to protect Radharani from meeting Krishna. Jatila Kutila's role was only to protect Radharani from meeting Krishna. There was a service to increase the love into anticipation. So one time, um, Radharani was in separation from Krishna. And she was crying and she fainted in that separation from Krishna as if she was bitten by snake. As if she was bitten by snake, she fainted. And then there was a big news that, you know, Radharani has fainted because of snake bite. And then Champaklata, the closest friend of Radharani, Champaklata, brought one mysterious village girl to the house of Jatila Kutila, where Radharani was unconscious with the so-called snake bite. And she said, Mother Jatila, this is a village girl. She is very mysterious. She is very skilled and powerful into removing the poison of snakes. So can I bring her to relieve Radharani of the poison of the snake bite? Jatila said immediately to bring her. So this girl told Jatila that I will take out the poison from this girl only on one condition. I should be allowed to be alone in the closed room with this girl. Then I will chant my mantras and relieve her of all the poison. So yes, the emergency was such that whatever you say, relieve this girl. So this girl was actually Krishna. 
<laughs> Disguised as a girl, Aboriginal village girl, brought by Champakalata's arrangement. Of that girl went inside the room and closed the room. And then he asked what he was going to do, which mantras to he is going to chant. Everybody wants to hear. So everybody was putting their ears on the door. Jatila, Kutila, Champaklata, Gopis, everybody was wanted to listen what he is saying. So inside he goes, close the door, and he asks as if he's talking to the snake. Huh? As if he is talking to a snake, he's asking, Oh snake. Why did you beat this girl? Then Krishna is speaking in the voice of a snake. Like he sings. Like this he's talking. What he's asking in the snake voice, he's responding. Because I hate Jatila and Kutila. And Krishna is himself asking in his own voice. Why? In snake voice is answering. Because they stop Radharani from going to Pavan Sarovar to cook for Krishna. This is the past time in which Vishwadarani requested uh, mother of Radharani Kirtida to send her to Bhavan Sarovar to cook for Krishna every day because Radharani was blessed by Durvasamani. To cook transcendentally nectarian food which will make the eater free from all disease, which will make the eater always victorious and free from all disease. This boon was given by Durva Samani to Radharani. So after hearing the boon, Yashoda went and requested Mother Kirtida to send Radharani to cook for Krishna so that Krishna becomes victorious and always remains healthy and enjoys the nectarian food. It was explained that Mother Yashoda also concluded that Krishna could kill all the demons because he was eating the nectarian food from the hands of Radharani every day. That's why he was powerful, he was victorious and he could kill even everybody concluded when he lifted Govardhan, they concluded that it was because of Radharani he could lift Govardhan mountain. So it was promise of Kirti Mata to send Radharani. She fulfilled the promise and she got married, came to Datila Kutila's house and they were also supposed to fulfill the promise and keep sending Radharani. But the snake is telling now, Jatila Kutila in between do not send her. So I am getting angry on her. If that is why I have bitten Radharani, because I know if Radharani dies, Jatila Kutila also will die and my revenge will be over. So Krishna is speaking now his own voice. How will you release this girl from your poison? Then he answering in snake voice. Only if Jatila and Kutila bow down to me, fall at my feet. That means uh, fall at the feet of Radharani. That means the snake is in the form of poison in the body of Radharani. If they bow down to me, apologize profusely and promise me that they will send Radharani every day without fail, without a break, then I will remove all my poison from the body, delicate body of Radharani. As soon as the Jatila and Kutila heard this inside, from inside, they opened the door and crashed inside and fell at the feet of Radharani, in the form of, I mean, thinking that it's snake and poison. Please, we promise you, we surrender. We promise you, we apologize thoroughly. Sorry, extremely sorry. We will never ever stop her from going to Pavan Sarovar to Nandagaon to cook for Krishna. And immediately Radharani woke up. So thus, Krishna came in the form of uh, a snake charmer girl to meet Radharani. So like that, there are many pastimes. Krishna came to Kokilavan and made sounds like Kokila, cuckoo bird. And Radharani was very enamored at her in-law's house and said, my mother-in-law, my dear mother, can we go to hear that beautiful cuckoo bird? And the Jatila said, yes, yes, I'm also very eager, but I'm an old lady. I cannot walk far distance. You please go and hear the beautiful sound of the Kokila and tell me exactly how he was singing. So, Vishaka Devi proposed this and Radharani, Vishaka, Gopis went to Kokilavan and heard the beautiful Kuku and then that Kuku was not Kuku, it was Krishna. They met Krishna. So finally, Krishna is described as Atma Ram in Srimad Bhagavatam. Self-satisfied personality. He is 
doesn't require anybody else to satisfy himself. But in the devotional circles, it is explained that Radharani is the Atma of Krishna. And in devotional circles, it is explained further that the self-satisfied Krishna cries for the association of Radharani, cries for her presence, misses her, goes in separation from her, becomes unconscious, starts rolling in the dust. How it is possible? So for for the people who understand the Parabrahma, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Paramatma level understanding of the Lord, for them Krishna presents himself as Atma Ram. But those who are devotees, those who are bhaktas of Krishna, for him, he reveals his original nature. That although he is self-satisfied, self-dependent, Swatantra, Abhigya, Swarat, he chooses out of his own independence to depend on Radharani long for her association, to cry for her, to cry in separation. That is the beauty of Vrindavan Dham. So, Dr. Bhakti Vinod says that <clears throat> it is Krishna, it is Radharani on whom Krishna is dependent. Krishna loves, although he is Swatantra, huh? unlimitedly independent personality. Independence is one of his nature. But out of his independence, he chooses to take shelter of Radharani. And that makes the love complete. He reciprocates to Radharani's love by becoming subordinate to her love, by becoming controlled by her. And all this personality of Radharani, how do we access her? We access her by chanting her name. Radhe. Radhe Kishori Dayakaro. Please be merciful upon me. Kada Karisha Siha Maam Kripa Kataksha Bhajanam. Hey Radhe. Kada Karisha Siha Maam Kripa Kataksha Bhajanam. O Radha, when you will cast your sidelong merciful glance upon me, because when you will cast your sidelong glances upon me, Kripa Kataksha, I will be delivered. I will be blessed. I am longing for you to look at me. To acknowledge my presence. I am also insignificant. But I need your glance. I need your merciful glance. Because you, when you accept us as your own, then Krishna cannot refuse us as his own. So please accept us. Please be merciful upon us. Please give us that love with which we can serve Krishna. Please bestow that love upon us by which Krishna can accept us through you. Please accept us so that we can be accepted by Krishna. That's why we chant Hare Krishna. We chant Hare before Krishna. Because Hare is the Sambodhan, calling of Hara. Hara when we call, we say Hare. Sita when we call, we say Sita. So like that, Hare when we say, it is Radharani, calling for Radharani. So Krishna will turn and see, who is calling my beloved Radharani? And then you will call Krishna. So he'll, he will hear your calling and he will accept you. That's why we chant Hare Krishna. That's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So let us all chant Hare Krishna and seek blessings, plead for mercy, cry for mercy and another Rani will come running to accept us mercifully and offer us as an offering to Sri Krishna and our life will be successful. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. May Radharani bless you. Tomorrow is Radhashtami. The day when she is extremely merciful, all those who are intelligent will pray to her, seek blessings from her, offer her prayers, so that we can please Krishna through her grace and with our little tiny efforts, coupled with her blessings, we beg to her that we will want to please Krishna only through her grace. So I wish you all the best for praying tomorrow for her grace and become successful in life. Hare Krishna. If there are any questions, you can ask. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Thank you so much Prabhuji for such an enlightening class. Uh, so as uh, we have we released your class uh, during last time uh, Radha Ashtami, 
same way we have relished at this time also thank you so much for coming on the call so we had you on the call uh, i think it was two months before and uh, we wanted you for, especially for this radhashtami to give this special lecture and uh, you beautifully narrated how uh, all the devis are uh, the expansions of uh, shrimati radharani so as uh, it comes in um, uh what uh, uh radha kripa kataksha swaraj it comes right uh, like makeshri kriyeshri sudeshri sureshri everyone uh, is uh, the expansion all, of all the devils all the ishwari yeah yeah so and uh, uh, we relished all the past times which you told uh, that uh, the 400 form of uh, vishnu and uh, you told about uh, yamuna devi and uh, govardhan how they were created and uh, yes uh, we want you once again on the call to expand uh, to tell about uh, yamuna devi how she has uh, descended uh, the uh, importance of yamuna devi as you told so i sure, sure. uh, think uh, the day will come soon and uh, we will have you soon uh, to give Thank us you. the nectarian lecture on that also um and uh, yes uh, lastly which you told about um, yes prabhu ji yeah so questions is maybe is uh, yeah Shukhar there are uh, there are hand raised prabhu ji shukka prabhu ji please go ahead with your question yeah yes please ask prabhu ji hare krishna wait wait one minute huh? i'll open open the sound i lock the sound okay now you can speak the host uh, yeah hare krishna vishnu prabhu dandar pranam vishwakar ke sadat i met you in gordhan eco village yes very respectable yeah. yes prabhu so radharani you brought so much close so what you said was radharani the hare krishna means we are uh, krishna is inviting radharani and hare krishna and krishna krishna hare hare means it is separation the one is yes ma mantra has got many understandings Mahamantra is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna is Milan, meeting, ah. and Krishna ah. Krishna Hare Hare is separation. So, ah. uh, Sri Yoga and V Yoga both are exhibited in Mahamantra. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Sureshwar Sharma, mm-hmm. you have to show yourself. Then I can uh, highlight you, spotlight you, please. Yeah, Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji, Dandavat Pranam. so prabhu ji one question i have you were saying uh, uh, but thank you prabhu for narrating this in a sweet way all the past times <laughs> so one question prabhu you are, see krishna radharani is an energy expansion of krishna right prabhu yes and yes. like you were saying but radharani he is teaching krishna how to dance and all other things <laughs> right? so yes so what is the question so that is the question prabhu how yes. like how can how no how can who is you know one of the energies of krishna you know teach krishna i already explained to you that that energy of krishna when we becomes personified as radharani the energy of krishna gets multiplied millions of times the karuna of krishna becomes millions of times that is the whole beauty of radharani's personality krishna's qualities they become multiplied in radharani's personality so much so that radharani krishna desires to become subordinate to her that is why he wants to learn from her he wants to show the world that the faculty of love that is in him manifests itself as radha mm-hmm. multiplying the love faculty millions of times so much so that i want to become subordinate to that love that means he wants to tell everybody that if you want to achieve me there is no other way no other way no other way but love Mm. and then he exhibits that fact in the form of radharani in the in the example of radharani he wants to tell all of us that don't expect that i will be conquered by you by any any material means i will be achievable only through love and see the example of radharani how i am subordinate to her love so we are not we are not trying to conquer krishna or control krishna we want to just uh, be accepted by him and that is possible only by love so the power of love is so much that krishna is telling us that this is so much powerful that i will become subordinate i will become yours okay so, so very nice prabhu very yeah, monika avasti mata ji can you show yourself and then i can take your question yeah thank you so much hari yes, krishna prabhu ji that is thank you so much for the wonderful class first uh, first of all uh, 
it's a wonderful class and uh, it's a power pack up for uh, preparing our consciousness for the, uh, for uh, radhashtami uh, oh. my question yes. yeah 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 tomorrow yeah uh-huh. Prabhuji. Uh, yes. uh, my question is uh, you told that uh, uh, jo radha can i speak in hindi yeah 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 no problem feel comfortable yeah 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 uh, prabhu ji aapne kaha ki uh, jo uh, ye hai uh, govardhan hai wo radha jo jab krishna ne meditate kiya uh, yeah. radha ji ke love ke liye matlab radha ka love jab unhone meditate kiya tab uh, govardhan प्रकट हुए है ना गोवर्धन उससे प्रकट yes. हुए देन देन हाउ कैन और मैंने ये मतलब बलराम पूर्णिमा के लेक्चर में मैंने सुना था प्रभु जी की जो वो है मतलब जो बलराम जी हैं वो शांत रस में एज मतलब जो एक्सपेंशन है जो भी मतलब जितने भी जो पेरिफर है हाँ मेरा भाई कैसे ये 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 मुझे थोड़ा सा ये कंफ्यूज मतलब इस बात में मैं इस चीज में कंफ्यूज हो गई कि हम इस चीज को कैसे ले क्योंकि बलराम पूर्णिमा के लेक्चर में मैंने सुना था प्रभु जी की जो वो है गोवर्धन है और जो यमुना जी है वो भी एक तरीके से इनकी एक्सपेंशन है बलराम जी की अरे देखो ऐसा है ऐसा है आई एक्सप्लेन टू यू क्या हिंदी बताऊ इंग्लिश बताऊ वॉट एवर प्रभु जी आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड एक्सटर्नल फॉर्मेट वृंदावन धाम मीन्स द भूमि द ट्रीज कृष्णाज बेड कृष्णाज क्लोथ्स कृष्णाज ऑर्नामेंट्स पी कॉक फेदर एवरीथिंग इज बलराम ओके एंड इवन गोवर्धन इज ऑल्सो बलराम फ्रॉम दैट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू बिकॉज शांतारस ही एक्सपांड इन टू ऑल द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर ऑफ वृंदावन धाम बट एसेंशियली एंड इंटरनली Govardhan Parvat is love of Krishna for Radharani. It's like you, you have two hands, two eyes, but you also have a heart, right? Your hands and eyes and heart is different. Heart is full of emotions, and hands and legs are expressing that emotion. So, to make you understand easily, your hands and uh, eye, ears and eyes are Balram like, like Balram. and your heart is like radharani yes so got it, the got it. love for krishna love of krishna for radharani in essence is govardhan but external format of govardhan is balram ji and yes, balram ji yes, also is love he also has love but his love is of different type and radharani's yeah. love is different type it's like you may love your brother and you love your husband oh. both are love only selfless love but you are they are different love so like that radharani's love for krishna is different and balram's love for krishna is different and they both are selfless but they are still different thank you krishna. thank you so much prabhu anybody else who has a question comment doubt yes pv sudhakar prabhu ji please go ahead you can highlight him with spotlight him where is he yeah, he is here radhe radhe दमाम one time okay okay please tell me what is your question <laughs> first i should thank for this wonderful session i learned a lot something about leela which i never had i think that is first thing i should say and uh, my question is not a question actually i have a doubt what i learned from so far i'm not an expert abhyasi <laughs> uh, we say mahamantra is a hare rama hare krishna right hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare krishna i think the केस वाय instead of uh, hare krishna hare krishna radha krishna is not mentioned in the mahamantra so you are asking why not radha krishna why hare krishna 
Yeah, I'm just having a doubt. I'm yeah, so you are right. And there is also evidence in scriptures. Uh, there are two mantras. One is Maha Mantra. One is Yugal Mantra. Yugal Mantra is Radhe Krishna, Radhe Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Radhe Radhe, Radhe Sham, Radhe Sham, Sham Sham, Radhe Radhe. This Yugal Mantra was given by Lord Shiva to his wife Parvati Devi. Okay. And uh, that is also bona fide. And the Brijavasis chant Yugal Mantra. And that is completely bona fide. And another is Maha Mantra that is given in, given in Kali Santarana Upanishad. Uh, where it is mentioned that in Kali Yuga, this will be most prevalent and Lord will come himself down to propagate this mantra. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sri Krishna himself came down and propagated Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So when we go to Vrindavan, we meet Brijvasis, they chant Radhe Krishna, Radhe Krishna and we chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare and both of us respect each other. Where both things are right. The word Hara has got a typical meaning. Why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave us Hare Krishna Mahamantra? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave us Hare Krishna Mahamantra because the word Hara is the name of Radharani. Hara Devi. What is the meaning? One who steals the heart of Krishna. That is called Hara. Haran, Haran. Haran means stealing. So she by her personality, by her power of love, steals the heart of Krishna. And when we address Hara, it becomes Hare. So when we say Hare Krishna, we are always addressing that personality who steals the heart of Krishna, the power of love. So we are teaching ourselves, it is love only which can steal Krishna's heart. We also can steal his heart by love. So we chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And Brajavasis chant Radhe Krishna and Radhe Sham. Both are bona fide. There is nothing wrong in that. Nothing higher, nothing lower. Nothing, yeah. um, no, no comparison. So, I understand that, but I was trying to know why you know people insist. But we should like take it. one. We should not yeah. you know mix up things and uh, create something on our own. We have received Hare Krishna Mahamantra from our sampradaya, from our Guru Maharaj. So we chant. And those people who receive uh, Yugal Mantra from their sampradaya, their Guru, they will chant. And they should honor. They should be committed and dedicated to the mantra which they receive from their lineage. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You, very much. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's very tough to chant Hare Krishna in Al Khobar and Dhamam. <laughs> I chant Christine. in my house. I know yeah, here. In the house you can story. chant. In the house you can chant. Sorry, it is not uh, publicly, you cannot do much uh, because it's yes, in yes. your country. So, Shama Gauri Devi, please ask. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Babaji. Thank you so much for the hey, beautiful, Jai. beautiful nectarian class. It's like, you know. Radhe, Radhe. <laughs> Uh, we got different uh, nectar, you know. <laughs> it's very nice beginning of Radhashtami. Radhashtami is today in USA. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. yeah that's fine. Oh, wow. What is the time now there? Uh, it's uh, almost 9 o'clock in the morning. Oh, 9 in the morning, huh? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah, I uh, wanted to say some... Sureshwar Shyam I think he's gone. He wanted to say. I was uh, telling you that I am happy to see you wearing Radhe Radhe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yes, Prabhuji, I have a question like uh, when Krishna took the four handed form and when the Radha Rani's bow, he sees the Radha Rani's bow and uh, the two hands, they just disappear. So, and nobody wears forehand in uh, Vrindavan, no, no, no. but in uh, Vaikuntha, everybody is forehanded. So, what is the signi significance of having four hands in Vaikuntha? Aishwarya, opulence. Why four only? There are many arms. Lord has got eight arms, twelve arms, sixteen arms, thousands arms. Yeah. So, uh, uh, having more than two arms, Meaning, meaning Aishwarya, opulence. And those more than two arms are never empty. They either have Chakra or they have Sword or they have Parshu, they have Ankusha, they have you know Lotus Flower, they have so many things are there. Mm -hmm. so four arms and more than four arms means Aishwarya. Krishna also exhibited 12 armed form at a place called Chatikara near Govardhan, near Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. It's Garud Govinda Mandir where he exhibited a form 
of 12 arms. Oh. As, then, yeah, yeah, there's a temple of Garud Govinda. Near yeah, I visited Prabhuji recently. Uh, so that, that, that form is 12 arms. Oh. We, didn't see, uh, we didn't see the deities because they were covered with the cloth, only like a tip of nose of uh, so You have to come with me. When you come with me, I will be able to show you. Prabhuji, not that fortunate because it's <laughs> very in, difficult to match. I'm going in November now and mm -hmm. I'll be taking devotees to Garud Govinda also. Garud so, Garud. what I was telling you that Krishna has manifested forms of many, many arms at many, many different, different times. Mm -hmm. But those forms do, need, do not remain for a long time in Vrindavan because Vrindavan is overwhelmed with love and Madhurya. So, he cannot maintain his opulence for longer time. It just melts away immediately. <laughs> Yeah. Any other question? Uh, yeah, and one more question like um, Hare Krishna is like uh, Milan and uh, Krishna Krishna Hare Hare. Like, can you explain a little more about that? Well, this is a very deep subject. In short, Mahamantra is complete and perfect. Mm -hmm. Mahamantra uh, gives you experience of separation, Viyoga, and Mahamantra also can give you experience of Milan meeting of Krishna. We have to go in the depths of Mahamantra. We cannot just chant mechanically, number game, we should not do. We should call out Krishna. I always request people, don't, uh, don't just chant. I mean, don't just finish your rounds. Chant your rounds. I think, <laughs> first thing I say, we are always racing, you know, number game. 1, 2, 3, 4, 15, 16. Don't finish your rounds. Chant your rounds. And then I say, don't chant your rounds, call Krishna. You call every name. Every name is meant for calling. Why we? Why your name is uh, uh, Shama Gauri? Because we want to call you by that name. Why my, my name is Vishwarup Das? Because I want others to call me by that name. Some name is there, I can turn to you when I, that name is called. So all names are supposed to be for calling only. So when we chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra, the 16 names are for calling only. We are supposed to call. You're supposed to call Krishna and catch his attention. And when we call with feeling, then his attention is caught. Yes. We attract him. And, uh, and when we do that, then this experience of separation in the beginning, then meeting Krishna, Krishna will reveal yourself, reveal to you himself in the name of his own. When you call the name, one day will come in your and my life, well, Krishna will reveal himself through his name. And for that, we have to hanker. Not, you know, 16 round and throw the mala in mala and uh, forget about it until next morning. We don't want to do anything with that. So that's why I'm saying that this Mahamantra is extremely studied with unlimited power. We have to only realize it by chanting attentively and prayfully, gratefully and gracefully. Okay? Yeah. Thank Everything you is there so in the holy you. name. Whatever yes. you need is there in the holy name. Everything is contained in the holy name, Mahamantra, and everything will be available to you through the holy name only, nothing else. Okay, thank you. So, thank Pujar, you. Maharaj, please ask next question. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Yeah, Pujar, Open your audio, Mataji. <coughs> Yes, Mataji, Yes. Prabhuji, I don't I want I'm not able to hear you. I'm not able to hear you, Mataji. You're cutting Hare in between. Krishna. Haan, Hare Krishna na. Prabhuji, Dandvat Pranam. Haan, Dandvat Pranam. Prabhuji, I want to glorify Radharani today with two lines. Haan. If you if you allow me. Haan, please speak quickly. <laughs> Radha Rani ki jai, Maharani ki jai, Radha Rani ki jai, Maharani ki jai, Bolo Barsane Vari ki jai, 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 Bolo Barsane Vari ki jai, 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 Radha Rani ki jai, Maharani ki jai, Hare Krishna, Radhe Radhe. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you much, Prabhuji. Uh, Prabhuji, I have one question. 
like uh, in uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra, it's myself, uh, um, Anita Ramya. Uh, can you highlight yourself, please? Uh, yes, please. Yes, yes Madhuj, tell me. Yes. Uh, Prabhuji, uh, actually, um, in Hare Krishna Mahamantra, we say that uh, uh, Radha and Krishna, first line, and second is, uh, it, co it comes uh, Ram. So, Ram and Hare, right? So, in that, uh, we can uh, mean it as Ram and Sita, or how it is, Prabhuji? Okay, see, um, Mahamantra of Hare Krishna Mahamantra is only about Krishna's names. Okay? Yeah. Very simple. Is uh, only Krishna's name. So, what is the meaning of Ram? He is that personality pleasure. who gives pleasure. pleasure. pleasure yeah. so, Ramanti iti Ramaha. It also means Sri Krishna, who is pleasure, the source of all pleasure. It also means Balaram. It also means Ramachandra, Lord Ramachandra, also. So, uh, we chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra with the meaning that it is supreme personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna only. But there is no problem if you think he is Balram or if you, uh, if you think he is Lord Ramchandra. There is no problem at all. As long as you uh, address the Supreme Personality of Godhead, it is perfect. No problem at all. Okay. okay? Thank you so much, Prabhuji. And one more question I have. Can I yes. ask, Prabhuji? Yes, yes. Please ask. Uh, Prabhuji, actually, this is uh, this is uh, one question which I have for a long time from last Radha Ashtami. I have this question. Like uh, last time you were saying that uh, the the mountain used to fly. Uh, so that past time you were uh, narrating last time. So in that, uh, in, uh, in one place you told uh, Radha is uh, um, I, uh, what? Uh, Younger than Krishna see. or elder than Krishna? So I just I have a confusion in that. So when I say it's a I say, long story, which tells yeah. you exactly she is younger also and older also than Krishna. Ah, okay. Now it will take another. How to understand now. that, Prabhuji? Because I have this question. But because there's a story. Uh, there's say, a story which explains you how she is older and how she is younger. Both things are there in that story. So it will take another half an hour for me to tell the story. Okay, so I will again, 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 I will tell you the story. <laughs> <coughs> maybe okay. next time, Prabhuji, we will have. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you propose in such a way that remind me to tell the story, I will tell the story. Okay, okay, yes. Now your time, okay. I am I'm available, but your time is up, so I don't know what to do. Yeah, it's yes. a time is up, but uh, half an hour is more. <laughs> like, by 10 minutes, it's okay. 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> It's okay, okay, you want me to tell in short? Okay, I'll tell you yeah, short. Yeah. Uh, then you don't blame me because I made it mechanical, but I'll tell you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I always like to tell story in a very descriptive, in a very beautiful way. But anyway, Vindya Parvat, you know, Vindya Parvat uh, worshipped, performed tapasya because uh, Himalaya Parvat got Parvati Devi as daughter. So Vindya Parvat also did tapasya and he got two daughters. That is yeah. Radharani and Chandravali. Okay. So the original father and mother of Radharani and Chandravali is Vindya Parvat, Vindya Chala. And then uh, he had done tapasya asking for a girl who will be having a husband greater than Lord Shiva because Parvati Devi, daughter of Himalaya, got married to Mahadev. So he said, I want to have a girl who, whose husband will be greater than Lord Shiva. So then he got Radharani and Chandravali. Okay. Out of Chandravali, Radharani was that girl who will be having a husband as Krishna who is higher than Lord Shiva. So this news went to Kamsa that someone is born whose husband will be more powerful than Lord Shiva also. So he, he wanted to marry that girl so that he will become powerful more than Lord Shiva. So he sent Putana. <coughs> By that time, uh, Radharani had grown up like you no know, toddler baby, almost uh, less than a year. Putana went and she captured these two girls and she started flying in the sky towards Mathura. So Vindyashal came to know that, oh, my daughters are captured by this demoness. So he told his Puroids, come quickly, put up the fire sacrifice and chant mantras to burn this lady in the sky. 
So they chanted such mantras and offered oblations that Putana Devi, uh, Putana flying in the sky, started feeling fire in her body. So she dropped one girl, that is Chandravali, in Nagpur, in Vidarbha Desha. Bishmaka, the later who became father of Rukmini, raised her for five years. At the end of five years, Purnamasi came and took her to Vrindavan, gave it, gave her to Chandra Bhanu Maharaj, and she became Chandravali. Okay. Then Putra kept on flying, and then she went to towards Matra. Almost she went to Matra, and the mantras were creating fire and fire and fire more and more. And she just could not hold Radharani in her hand, so she dropped her. And Radharani fell early morning on the lotus flower in Jamuna, and that was fifteen days after Krishna's birth. Okay. So that girl who was grown up girl, less than 15 years, one year minus 15 days, was taken by Vrishwanu Maharaj and she became his daughter. So she is older to Krishna also because she was born in Vidyachal. And she's younger to ah. Krishna also because she was brought by Vrishwanu Maharaj after 15 days of Krishna's birth. So by this way, she is 15 days younger to Krishna and 345 days older to Krishna also. <laughs> Thank you so much, Prabhuji. I, this ah. doubt is cleared now. Thank you so much. Yes, it was uh, a very long time uh, question for me. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you, Shamakari yes, Mataji, for bringing Prabhuji again on the call. Hare Krishna. Yes. You have another Thank question? Thank you, Prabhu. Actually, uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu, actually, uh, today I was just hearing uh, Amarindra Prabhu, he was telling, uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna is Radha Krishna Milan, as you said. And Krishna Krishna Hare Hare is separation. And Hare Rama, he said Rama is Radha Madhav. They are always together. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, and Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So I think it's all, as he said, it's, it's only Krishna, nobody else. Yes. 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 So Shamagori Mataji, you have a question? Shamagori Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. <clears throat> so, uh, what we celebrate uh, today, Radhashtami, is which one is it? Is, is it when she came to Vrindavan? Yes, she, or came to Vrindavan. Is... she came to Vrindavan. Yes, we okay. celebrate the day when she was brought in Vrindavan. Yes. Because her destination is Vrindavan. Her real birth is considered to be in Vrindavan. Vrindavan, yes. Technically, it is Vindyachal, but the real birth is in Vrindavan, where she wants to be. She wants to reach, she wants to go where Krishna is, she wants to express her love. In Vindyachal, where is Krishna? There is no Krishna there. So, yes. Baraj Bhumi is her destination. And that is why we celebrate Bhadrabhat Shukla Ashtami as a day of Radharani. Okay. okay? So, we yes. end here, Mataji. Yes, so, Prabhuji. With your permission, with all the best wishes for all of you for Radharani, may Radharani bless all of you with love and selfless service. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Prabhuji, for giving your valuable time and association. It was just a wonderful, wonderful class and so nice explanation and pastimes. Uh, devotees, uh, let's pay our obeisances. We want you often, uh, frequently to come on the call and uh, enlighten us uh, with your uh, lectures and pastimes, Prabhuji. Uh, devotees, honor, we'll pay our obeisances. We'll pay our obeisances. It's a pleasure to serve you. a very happy Radha to those who are celebrating in advance and to, to those who are all celebrating today. A very Radha Ashtami. Happy Radha Ashtami. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Jai Shivadhe. Gauranda. Happy Radha. We'll be ending the call here. Thank you all so much for joining.